Hello, this is Cornell Thomas, speaker, author, and starter of the Positivity Summit Movement. You are listening to Chasing Dreams with the amazing Amy J. Welcome to Chasing Dreams Podcast with Amy J. Amy believes that realizing a life without regrets is achieved by taking chances, chasing your dreams, making moves, and overcoming your doubts. The Chasing Dreams Podcast will help you overcome life's obstacles, believe in your potential, and inspire you to face your fears. And now here's the woman who is passionately pursuing her dreams, Amy J. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode 76 of Chasing Dreams. Today, I have a repeat guest. I'm bringing back my good friend, my cousin, my brother, Cornell Thomas, who you heard at the beginning. And this time, it didn't take us forever to say it. And (laughs) we are going to have a great time because I wanted to bring him on so that we can kind of talk about a project he's doing. And I mentioned it on the beginning show about two weeks ago. And I wanted to kind of see how it is, because it's interesting when we change directions in our dreams, sometimes we don't get a chance to kind of look back and evaluate it. And so we're kind of going to do that with with Cornell today and what he's doing and and pursuing and which will actually take place in March. Cornell, welcome back to the show, my friend. Thank you so much, my cousin from, uh, see, that doesn't go with anything. But thank you so much for having me. That's actually back true. On this show. What it's do people honor. say for that? My cousin from another muzzin. It doesn't make, there's nothing you can use. Muzzin? No. My- <laughs> you know what? Let me not, because I may say something in another language that's just offensive or something. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess that doesn't work for anybody. But you are a repeater. Welcome yes. back. I'm so honored. Thank you so much for having me again. We've always talked about how our, our, interests are kind of parallel. The fact that Mm -hmm. Positivity Summit, I love that. Dream chasing, you're you're into that, you know? Yeah. You were doing something back in September when you were first on the show, episode 59, guys, if you haven't heard it already, awesome episode where he talked about turning your why me into what now. Mm. See, I paid attention to that episode. I love it. I love it. Thank you for paying attention. I do. and But you've had so many new things happen actually since then. Yeah. What what's happened since then? Can you update us? Give give us a sure. a two minute update of Cornell Thomas. Up, really quick, 120 seconds. It goes like this: uh, the Positivity Summit end up getting canceled for September 10th and 11th, or I think it was 10th, 11th, and 12th, because there's just so many. It was like the perfect storm. I had two speakers that had to back out for personal reasons. The venue, the price of the ticket was just way too high. So there's just a million things that happened. So I had to move. Uh, the September date to March. And also, I finished my children's book, which should be published soon. I finished my fourth book, which should be out after the Positivity Summit. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what happened. Look at that. Not even two minutes. But that's a lot of stuff to happen for you. Sure. sure. I mean, yeah. when you were on the show, you talked about being confident in the decision to move the summit to spring. Yeah. Right. And sometimes when we have a dream and it goes away, we didn't expect it to go. You kind of have to move with the flow. But now that you're kind of in the middle of that, looking back, what do you think about that? I mean, do you think it would have been better if you had just stuck with the September date? You know, we talked about on the first episode that I had with you uh, that everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, Amy, the best thing that could have happened for me was that the summit didn't take place in September because not only moving it to a different venue that was a lot less expensive and still just as awesome, I could cut the ticket price in half, which helps me sleep better. But I was also able to get three new speakers that are phenomenal that I never would have been able to get if I had the event in September. So it really worked out for the best. Now, did you feel that way in September? Uh, no, because <laughs> when it first, when it first happened, you know, I had a moment of, you know, being a little pissed off. I was like, man, I can't believe this. I have to call up all the speakers and blah, blah, blah. And then I just kind of slapped my mind back on the right track and said, look, 
Everything happens for a reason. You might not see it today. You might not see it tomorrow. But trust me, this is going to work out for the better. And it did. So with that, like, you always talk in between the two of us, I'll, I'll end up having like follow up. So you said that, you know, you just took a moment. And that whole episode we had was, you know, uh, turning your why me into what now. And mm-hmm. you've clearly done that, right? You, we're yeah. going to talk more about detail on how this positive summit's going. But when you had that feeling of frustration, let's just call it what it was, frustration. And, you know, you were pissed off. You were annoyed. You, you were frustrated. How long did you give yourself? I gave myself, honestly, about 30 minutes. And the reason I say 30 minutes is because I was driving and I <laughs> and I was just thinking about it as I was driving. I forgot where I was coming from and I was on my way home. But as soon as I got home, I was looking up other speakers, different venues and how to make this March date work. So 30 minutes. Wait, wait, wait. Did you make a serious big decision like canceling a summit in the car? Yes. While driving? While driving. And you were confident in it? I was confident. I knew that I had to cancel it. And I I just felt that when I did, eventually it's going to work out. And it, like I said, I didn't think it was going to happen that day. Uh, I had no idea what was going to happen. But then as soon as I canceled it, that I'm telling you, the very next day as I started taking that forward movement towards uh, the new goal now, which was March, just things started happening. You know, the, the stars started opening up a little bit and I started meeting these people and these connections and it just started working out great. Wow. I mean, you, so you you made I didn't even realize you made the decision in the car while you're driving like. That's a big decision. You had all these pe- people that were dependent upon it. You already had people yeah. registered, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and on top of on top of that, the event place that I was going through, um, they were holding up the registration. So like the people that registered, I they told me that it was going to take a while for them to even be able to get their money back. Oh, really? So there was a lot of apologies that I was giving out, not just to the speakers, but to the people that are already registered. But you made the decision with the mindset that peace of mind, I guess it's not mindset. You you made the decision with peace of mind while driving in a car. Yes. While driving in the car, I was driving home and I was just, my mindset was just like, okay, it's your man. Apologies is not, that's nothing new. Like I, if when I'm wrong, I'm at fault. Even when I'm not at fault, sometimes apologizing isn't, that's not a problem for me. So that's one thing. And I'm sincere about it. And then it was like, okay, well, how do you make it right? Well, you write this shit by making this, this first event, the best event ever blow the September one out the water, whatever you're going to do for the September one. So I, it was just an immediate shift. So then, okay. And, and guys, the reason I'm harping on this whole, you're, you're doing it in the car and making this decision is, I mean, it's not easy to make a decision. I mean, we, I hem and haw on things so often that, I mean, it sounds like you just had to talk with yourself and was like, you got to pull the trigger. Yeah. I, you know, I, you get to the point and it was the same thing, Amy, when I was talking to you and your view, your listeners about, you know, when I first got injured and when I came back and I had this coaching opportunity at some point I had to, had to have a really hard conversation with myself and say, Hey, you know what? Maybe it's time to change course. And that was the toughest, you know, that's the toughest fork in the world that I had to come to. So this one wasn't as tough as that. <laughs> you know, it was like I was hell bent, set, set on playing professional basketball. So for me to say, okay, go into coaching, get into coaching, that was one of the toughest decisions I've ever made in my life. So this one, although it was tough, it wasn't the hardest decision that I, I ever made. So that's why I was able to do it. And I mean, you already had things that you were working on in between. So it sounds like even when you made that decision, you kind of had to adjust uh, a number of other plans that relied on it. Yeah, (laughs) everything, everything, every project that I had in my mind, in my mind's eye, where I was like, okay, well, I'll do this, this, at this point and this point and this point, all of that changed. So the timing of everything got thrown off when I canceled the September event. And so how do you handle that? Like, because we're essentially talking about a ripple effect of a decision you made 
for something that you held really close to your heart? Mm. I mean, um, is that a sit down, let's figure it out, or is it a take it as it comes? I, you probably heard it before because you're a podcast master, but there's a uh, a podcast called How I Built This. And I have heard that. Okay, it, they have this. Good they podcast. have this. It's a great podcast. I, I'm binge listening to it. And they had a guy on there named Jose Andres, Andres, and he said, luck only happens when you're actively moving and searching for what's next. And that struck me. I heard a couple of days ago, and that really just struck a chord with me because that was me. I just decided to start moving. You know, like I'll make phone calls. I'll reach out to people. I'll just I'll just move. And that's what I when I once I started moving, things started happening. I think if I would have sat in my house and just kind of you know, was bummed out and thought about the positivity, something and how it didn't work out and I have to contact all these people and blah, 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 blah. I wouldn't be having this conversation with you. It'd be completely different. So I just got up and started moving. Once I started moving, opportunities started to happen. Now, when you're planning this summit, because I remember the plans uh, you had for September. Yeah. And what you had intended for that. And when you were on the show, you talked about how you wanted to make uh, a movement an action yep. movement essentially uh, kind of changed the world, if you will. Mm -hmm. And now you're redoing it March. At, by that time, you probably had, what was that five months, six months, yeah. something yep. like that to get ready for this? Yeah. Did that intention change? No, <laughs> not at all. That the, the main reason I'm doing this Positivity Summit is to change the planet. And it doesn't matter where we do it, the number of people or what else happens, that will always be the same. That will always be the theme. I want to change the planet. So um, nothing changed with that. Uh, the only thing that changed is instead of it being three days, I made it two. Mm -hmm. And instead of it being, you know, 600 some dollars, it's now 300 some dollars. You know, so those are the only major things that change. I think when we were talking to, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go in the city and do um, a give back and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. We're still doing a give back day, but now it's more close to home. Now I'm doing it in the city of Passaic where my father did so many things to change the community. You know, so I met with the mayor of Passaic last week. He was like, the city is yours for that day. And, you know, like I said, everything happens for <laughs> everything happens for a reason. You know, I can honor my father on this give back day, which I which I didn't which I wasn't planning on doing for the one in September. I didn't think I could be able to pull it, pull that off right away. That's amazing. Yeah. So. Take a moment, though, and talk about your speakers. Uh, do you have the same lineup you did previously? No, completely different. So I have a couple speakers. I have about four speakers that were going to be there. So um, a guy by the name of June Archer, he's a you know, musician and just big time, a big time speaker. Uh, he's still on this guy, Tim Fortesview. He's um, he trains the top one percent in terms of uh, COO, CEOs. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, how to do, you know, more effective presentations and how to speak more effectively. Louise George is coming from England. Um, she's a coach and just a rock star. She has her own brand called Bodie Babes. And then I have um, uh, Mr. Enthusiasm, Robert Kreiner. He's from Oklahoma City. He was like one of Les Brown's first protégés. He's like one of my mentors. And those are the speakers that were on the first flyer. And now that the new speakers, one is um, Jillian Lloyden, who was a, got a gold medal from the U.S. women's soccer team. So I was able to get an Olympian in there, which I was really excited about. And then there's another speaker, Lane Williams, famous comedian. She was on NS, SNL. Um, she, you know, went through this, has this whole story of overcoming alcoholism. And now she uses, she used it, you know, comedy to overcome that. And then a lady um, by the name of Deidre Brickenridge. She has a podcast called Women Women's Worldwide, and she's you know Twitter verified, just professor in like a six thousand different uh, universities, and just absolutely phenomenal person. So these are the speakers that I was I was able to get after I canceled uh, the September Positivity Summit. So it's it's just amazing to think that <laughs> the dais is going to be that talented. I'm really excited for it. For those who don't know about your new date, and it'll be in the show notes, can you get can you share a little bit about what day, where, and where it's, you they can get more information? Of course, of course I will. Uh, it's March tenth and eleventh, and that's a Friday and a Saturday. 
and it's at Rutherford Hall in Alamuchi, New Jersey. And the website, the event page website, is www.cornellthomas365.com. And all the information is on there. Uh, sample itinerary is on there. And it starts at you know, around 9 a.m. We're done around 5.30 the first day. Then we come back two hours later, and we have this big network social slash party from 7.30 to 10.30. And then the next day is 9 to 5.30, so two full days. And then we all hug and high five. There'll be some tears and we get, we get ready for the next one. And guys, so one of the things that, you know, Cornell is doing is, is giving back and, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled with giving back. So one of the things we're going to do with the chasing dreams podcast is also a week of community service that week for March 10th, 11th, the previous week, kind of leading up to it. And uh, I am doing my best to be at the positivity summit because I'm pretty sure my my cousin's going to kill me if I wasn't there. So you better be there. Yeah, we will have announcements of community <laughs> service activities that uh, Dream Chasers can participate in uh, to help honor that event and everything that is coming up with it. It's awesome. I mean, awesome. you know, it, in in the world that we have uh, and the things that are going on, it's this kind of stuff that that is exciting. And the fact that you know, when you were putting this together, was everything out of pocket? Oh, yeah. Everything is still out of pocket. So I'm working on sponsorship. Uh, I'm going to start a Kickstarter in the next week. I'm shooting a video for it in the next week or so. So everything's been out of pocket. So that's <laughs> – it's been – when people say, hey, are you all in? I am – if there's if there's any word that's more than all in, that's me. And and that's what I wanted to talk about, guys. So Cornell turned his why, his why me to what now, right? And then – removed everything to March and kind of, I'd say like more than a hundred percent, probably 115% and <laughs> to make this thing happen. And sometimes you have to do that to have your dreams come true. I'm not saying go broke. Please don't go broke. Please don't <laughs> starve. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, you're not doing that, right? I should um, check on you. Are you okay? But I'm doing okay. This, I mean, I've had ramen noodles nine nights in a row, but other than that. Are your that, kids okay? I, I should check. I need My to kids, check. I don't know where they. I'll check on them. I'll see where they are. Oh man, yeah, I'm a slacker. My bad. <laughs> I should check on you more. But I mean, you, that's You're such a good friend. <laughs> you would say the same thing, though, right? I mean, well, I don't know. Yeah, I would say you have you have such great advice in terms of, you know, when you're chasing after something and you want something, it doesn't mean quit your day job. When that's the only way you're paying bills, you're paying rent. There's, you know, that doesn't mean that. And I know there's stories out there of people that have done that. I know Jerry Maguire was a really cool movie, but it doesn't mean that you have to do it. What it means is as you're at the day job, make sure that you're taking action steps and you're making a plan to never have to go back to it. And then when you're ready, go for it. And this is why I have him on the show, guys. <laughs> I mean, 2017, I, th this episode's airing essentially at the end of January. We're almost at the end of the first month. And a lot of times I think people are hard on themselves when too many things are are black and white, right and wrong, zeros and ones. You, you know, people are very hard pressed to think, you know, it doesn't have to be one way or the other. There are There are things in between. And I think when you can't do something because... I don't have enough money. It's not going to happen. You give up on it too quick. I mean, you're, you're a prime example of the opposite of that. Yeah. And that's, that's awesome. And just to see how things are turning out, you got an Olympian. Yeah. I don't, the Olympics were, was, it just happened. How did you get an Olympian? I got an Olympian by contacting, there's a, there's a lady actually from the Philly area. Her name's Heather Mitz. And she was the original person that I contacted. And I said, Heather, I would love to have you come out and speak. I read your story, unbelievable story, you know, where you come out. And Heather was like, yeah. We talked on the phone for 15 minutes. She was sold. And, you know, if you win a gold medal, bronze medal, any type of medal, I mean, they usually charge like $25,000 just to speak. Heather was like, no, I'm good. I'll waive that. I'll come speak. I believe in it. And I'm like, holy cow, this is awesome. Was that you so just the, cold calling randomly? Yeah. Did someone? I just messaged such, her. I, I read her story. I messaged her. I said, can we get on the phone? She said, yeah. <laughs> we got on the phone and we talked. And she has a, 
uh, kind of a newborn. And I had Naya was like, you know, that time, like a year. So we had something to talk about for sure. And uh, she went through it. She had an injury. I had an injury. And that's how it started. We just had a really good conversation. And that's how it started. And then the next day she contacted me and she goes, Cornell, I'm so sorry. She's like, I had no idea. She's like, I, had, you know, me and my husband, she's mar- she's married to um, AJ Freely, who was a NF, uh, Phillies quarterback um, back in the day. And she goes, we have something. We can't do it. And so I was like, no problem, Heather. Don't worry about it. And then a couple of weeks went by and I just had the thought, you know, birds of a feather flock together. You know, maybe I can call her and see if she knows anyone. And she gave me Jillian's name first. And I read Jillian's story and I was like, oh, my God, this story is so powerful. And I contacted her. Me and Jillian talked for like 15 minutes, about, about 15, 20 minutes. It, within three minutes, I was calling her like my little sister. Like we were tight like immediately. And Jillian was like, I love to do this. So I'm like, okay. And that was that people are more accessible than you think. And I think that's the problem when we see people that are on TV or we see people, you know, a lot of people, not me and you, but like a lot of people put them, people on a pedestal Mm -hmm. afraid to approach them without realizing that these people are so human beings. They're just human. They just happen to be on TV more than you, you know? So I have no problem talking to anybody i don't care what you do i look at you as a human being who you are and you know um that's how it happened and now jillian's coming in and she's just like all for it she's like so on board so i'm excited to have her yeah there's almost a a a sense of i don't want to say idol worship but idolization absolutely in in actors actresses musicians uh, even YouTube stars and, and the whatnot, you know, I'm yeah. sure some people are idolizing you. I'm just saying. Oh, but. no. Not me. <laughs> I'm just some, I'm some dude. But I mean, but that that's the point. Each and every one of us is just a regular old Joe. Sure. Sure. My mom said a long time ago, and I, I live by this. No one is above you. No one's below you. And if you live your life like that, man, you're going to have such a great life because you're going to treat people the right way. And that's the way I live my life every day. I don't care if you're cleaning up garbage off the street. I don't care if you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Everybody's the same to me, you know. So, um, reaching out to people isn't a problem. And at some point, people are going to be kind of begging me to be speakers at the Positivity Summit. <laughs> so it's pretty cool that I have to do it now. And then pretty soon, people will be like, "Hey, Cornell, can I come down?" I'm like, "Yeah, Tony, Tony Robbins. Yeah, you can. You can. I guess you can speak at it." You can come. Actually, did I see something uh, on social media uh, that Tony Robbins wrote to you? Maybe. You may, you may have. What, what no, is no, that? no. Don't, don't, don't be all shy. And, and why not? <laughs> if you guys remember, Tony Robbins is uh, this guy's m- mentor. Uh, not idolization, but you, no. you admire him. Yes, I admire him for sure. You admire him. And so. Yeah, my, only, my, my only human idol is my mother. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. I mean, he might have wrote an endorsement for my third book coming out in April. I don't know. How amazing. Okay. So this episode (laughs) apparently is going to be about tips that you guys can use in chasing your dream and reaching out to folks. Yeah. Yeah. How did you do that? Well, it was a year process. Wait, seriously? No, I'm being serious. It was a year process. Um, I... For the last, I say, four years since I've been making my own quotes, I tweet every day. I tweet one of my quotes to Tony. So him and a couple other people. And like when I first started doing my quotes, I think like six months went by and he retweeted one of them. And because he's Tony Robbins, if Tony Robbins says, hey, blew my nose, like a million people retweeted, like, oh, my God, he blew his nose. <laughs> um, so people started following me off that. And every like three or four months, he retweeted one. So I was I went to date with Destiny uh 2015 and I've tweeted something like looking forward to going to date with Destiny. And Tony Robbins direct messaged me and said, Cornell, as you know, I retweet a lot of your quotes. I'm looking forward to seeing you. And I was like, hmm, that's odd. He has millions, literally millions of people that follow him. He direct messaged me. So I go to date with Destiny. First day I raise my hand, he calls on me, we talk for like six or seven minutes. I come home and I say, Hey, Tony, um getting because you're like that. Yeah, we're cool. We're tight. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like Tony, getting to see you a date with Destiny kind of 
solidified for me that you're a real person. You know, I would, I would be honored if you wrote the forward to my third book. A week goes by, two weeks go by. He messages me back. He goes, Cornell, contact my executive assistant, Emily. And I'm like, um, is this happening? This is cool. And so I contact Emily and three months goes by. <laughs> and She didn't write, write you for three months? Not for three months. And she writes me back and she goes, Cornell, I'm so sorry. Tony's working on this documentary called I'm Not Your Guru. He's super busy. Um, let's try to figure something out. I said, Emily, no problem. I get it. Let's talk soon. Three months, three more months go by. So now we're at six months and I write Emily. I said, Hey, Emily. Um, I said, no, I said, Hey, e money. This is Cornell. Uh, just calling to say hi. She writes back like, ha 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 ha. LOL. She goes, you're so funny. I was having such a bad day and you wrote e money and it made my day. She goes, let's try to figure this out. Three more months go by. So now we're at nine months. <laughs> <laughs> we're in nine months. I love that and, it's like three month increments here. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so now we're like nine months. Actually, it's ten months. And I write her again, and I get a message back from Lady Diane, and she goes, "Cornell, Emily went left to get another. She went and got another job, but before she left, she told me that I had to contact you." And I was like thinking about it. I was like, "What an awesome person." Like she's about to leave. She probably has millions of messages and phone calls and whatever she has to return. And before she leaves, because I made her laugh one day, she tells this other lady to contact me. So me and Diane talk. Long story short, two months go by. And I'm up at 1.30 in the morning. And I email Diane. And she goes, Cornell, what's – like Tony just signed with Simon & Schuster. He couldn't write the forward for you. I said, okay, well, what if you wrote me a testimonial? And she goes, let me let me see. So I'm like, wait a second, this dude is up. And now it's like 2.30 in the morning. And so we're going back, me and Tony are talking back and forth through Diane. I fall asleep at 3.30. I have a basketball clinic. I got to wake up at 6. I wake up. I look at my email, and there's an endorsement from Tony. And I just had tears in my eyes. And I like, my wife was like, what's up? And I said, showed her the phone. I said, this goes to show you that, you know, there are just some amazing human beings out there. Here's a guy that I, I can't help at all that has people that ask him for stuff all the time. He doesn't do this at all. And, you know, because he connects with something that I'm doing, you know, he said he, he wrote me an endorsement and uh, I was just blown away. So I said, you know, if there's anyone that ever needs something from me, this is a great reminder. Never be too big to help someone that you don't know, you know, if they're doing their hearts in the right place. So that's how that all happened. It took a year, but, uh, when my third book comes out right on the back cover, a big, bold <laughs> print will be, uh, Tony's endorsement. Y'all can't see, cause I should really Facebook live these, uh, interviews. My jaw is dropping and I'm like in this surprise shock face of, ah! imagine a chiff of a baby, you know, the, the gift wrapper baby who's like, Oh my goodness. And so excited. That's me right now. Uh, that is me. I mean, cause you just kept going oh, like three months. What, did, was it a ghostwriter for Tony? But then, you know, the conversation, I mean, there's so many things. It, I was on the edge. I was on the well, edge and then e-money him. left and I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Yeah. But Diane came through. Yeah. Well, um, I'm honestly, my goal is to find Emily somehow. Cause I know I'm assuming she, you know, she doesn't have the same email. She's a different job, but find her somehow and just give her a big hug and say, thank you because you should give her a book too. Yeah, of course, mm -hmm. of course. But like, that was just so, that was big, you know? So, um, and Diane as well. So I, I wrote Tony right after I got the endorsement that, that day and I woke up and I wrote him and I said, you yeah, know, I just want to thank you and let you know what it means to me that you did this. I really appreciate it. I can't really express it in words. And he wrote me right back, direct, direct message me on Twitter and goes, Cornell, it's my pleasure. And I was like, man, I was just, I went to the basketball clinic. I was just flowing and I didn't put anything on social media for three months. And then, you know, I posted something and people were like, what? And I haven't, you know, I haven't, you know, posted every day or whatever, but I put something on the website and, now people kind of see it and they're like, wow, that's awesome. And I'm like, like, how'd you do that? I'm like, well, I believe I have faith. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I said, uh, you know, he just happens to be a great person. So, you know what I love about, about this story? There's so much to take away from it. One, you know, 
Tony didn't have to write you at any point. No. For that, right? He, he there's no, three thirty in the morning. He could be sleeping. Yeah. You know, wherever he was, he could have been sleeping. Uh, for for e money to do that. Yeah. She had no reason. Absolutely yeah. none. You know, didn't have yeah. to. Could have let it go. Yeah, the next person will pick it up. Mm-hmm. You know, the kindness of a small act as reminding, hey, Diane, can you please respond back to Cornell? Yeah. You know, what was that less than 10 words? Yeah. And Took the impact, her a second. Right? And the, the impact that that had, I mean, I'm sure she probably just thought it was, it was, you know, following up, but clearly it did a lot more than that. Yeah. I mean, this is someone that I'll never forget for the rest of my life that did that. And just the, Another sidebar on that is just being relentless. I mean, it's a year for this to happen. A year. That's true. What made you reach back out? Because that was like three month increments. I mean, I forget things after two months. The fact that you're writing back after after three, they're probably like, he's still at it again. Yeah. Well, I like one. I believe. Right. I have I have faith in what I'm doing, and you know, I definitely believe there's a higher power involved in it. And I'm relentless. Like, I'm just, you know, people say it and whatever. But when I say, like, I'm a lion, I'm serious. Like, I, if I want something, I'm going to make it happen. And that's something that after seeing him in person, I wanted it. I said, I want this because I believe in this person. I think this person's a great human being. And that's, that's why I want him on the back of my book. And um, I just didn't stop. There's no quit in me. Tina Thompson didn't raise a quitter. You know, she raised... Someone that just, you knock me down, you know, eight times, I'm going to get up 800, you know, like it doesn't, like I don't stop, you know, so um, I just kept going after it. And then, then it came, all came to fruition. I mean, I, it wouldn't surprise me guys if one day, I'm, I'm going to put this out there, uh, if Tony didn't stop by the Positivity Summit. I invited him. Boom. It may be this year. Yeah. I said, I said this, I said, um, I said, Tony, I said, I know you, you have a crazy schedule. I know you're really busy. I was like, I don't want you to come to the Positivity Summit as a speaker. I want you to come to the Positivity Summit as my guest. I don't want you to have to kiss babies and shake hands and high five. I just want to see, I want you to sit in the audience and see something that you helped inspire. And that was that, you know, and he's super freaking busy and, you know, I haven't heard back, but I wanted him to read that and let him know, like, look, man, people ask you for a lot of stuff. I'm giving you something. I want I want you to I'm not asking you for nothing. I just want you to sit down and and see what you inspired. That's awesome. I mean, because yeah. especially just how you worded it. I mean, you're not asking anything else of him, and he's more than happy to say yes or no, however he wants. But yeah. you know, the opportunity to see what he's inspired, not a lot of people get that. Yeah. They say um there's a famous line, people do, people don't get the flowers when they can still smell them, you know, and it's so true. Like how many people, like I, I reached out to someone today. This guy has his own jiu-jitsu school. Uh, his name's Tom DeBlas. He, he just always posts in, inspirational stuff, like helps a lot of people, just a good human being. And I reached out with, to him today and said, I just want to let you know, man, I hope you and your family are doing well. I hope you're good. I know that you give out a lot. I don't know how many people ask about you. And I just wanted to do that today. And he was like, hey, man, thanks. I really, I really appreciate it. And I'm like, just throwing it out there. So we're givers, Amy. We give to people. We pour into people. And sometimes, you know, we just we don't really don't care if it's reciprocated, but it doesn't get that way. So remember, like, don't just pour into people that need it. Pour into people that pour into people. You know. So that's why when I talk to you and I talk to Steve and other people, Stephen Hart, you know, another great podcaster, and I talk to all these great people in my life, I try to pour into them as much as possible because I want them to know that they're appreciated. You know, and I want to see how they're doing as well. That was awesome. <laughs> I keep saying awesome, but I mean, I love, I love what you, you are doing, what you've done. I mean, I think that's why we connected so quickly and so easily and why you've been on the show already more than a number of other guests, except my family. Yes. Well, you are family, so I guess it really doesn't count. Yeah. So <laughs> got to take that back. Take that one back. I got to take that one back. But, you know, and I'm excited for the positivity summit. I mean, I think that's what inspires the whole week long uh, of community service for for the week leading up to the positive summit that uh, we want to do. And, yeah. and the fact that, you know, your story is one that changed. I mean, not just 
earlier, but for this even, just how it changed and how you've handled it, how things have worked out. And just, I think it's been an inspiration. It is an inspiration, even from what we've been talking about, about how small things can lead to big things. Yeah, so true. And you know what? You said something, Amy, that I think is pretty amazing. What people need to understand is this. Whatever you go through in life, whatever adversity you go through in life and survive, that is more armor on your shield. So the more adversity you go through, the more armor you have on your shield. Because once you've gotten through a tough time, your mind can tell your body you can do it again. You know, when at first it was impossible, people said it was impossible to break the four minute mile. Once, you know, I think his name was John Bannister or whoever broke the four minute mile, it was broken like four or five times in the next two weeks. Because once you do it, right, it's already done. So people, every, all of us, we all have our battle scars, but battle scars are just a reminder that whatever tried to kill us couldn't, and we're still here. So you're ready to fight the next adversity when it comes, you know? So I think the, the battles that I've been in in my life, you know, I'm, I'm battle tested. I'm ready for the next one when it comes, you know, just like you are another, and everybody else It's just, you got to make sure to tell yourself that, you know, you're still here. You're over the age of eight, nine years old. You've been through some adversity in your life, you know, and you're still here. So whatever comes your way, you can knock it in the mouth and keep moving. I think that's a great uh, description for you, especially um, battle tested, but also that your armor is thick. Your armor is, is strong because of what you've gone through. And mm. It kind of is an example for others, uh, you know, because one one of the things I like to talk about is how, you know, don't 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 be afraid to make mistakes. Yeah, you got to embrace it because I think it it makes you stronger in the same way you just mentioned, and you have to change your perspective. I mean, that's yeah. that's a big thing for me right now is is change your perspective because I think once you do that, your your perception changes and you're you'd be amazed at what can happen. Love it. I love it. This is, and this is why me and you hang out because that's a mic drop, what you just said. I'm going to drop my mic, but before you drop your mic, you got to wrap up the show with one. Okay. So, so 2017, we are doing an explicit action that a dream chaser should take in order to chase their dream. Explicit Go. action. Meaning don't be general. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not. Whenever I get a great question, I always want to give it a couple seconds of thought. I don't want to just spit out something cray cray. Um, you want, do you want Jeopardy music? Is that? Oh, love, oh my god! Okay. I love Jeopardy do, music. Do, 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 do. Um, an explicit action. I would say this. I just said this to a good friend of mine today. We just got off the phone. I said, write down three things that scare you in terms of your dreams. Like three things that are just frightening you. So say you want to you know, write a book. It could be sharing my story scares me, whatever, whatever it is. After you write down those three things and give them some thought, right next to them, I want you to write, how would you overcome that fear? And when you overcome that fear, what could happen? So if it's sharing your story, how would you overcome it? Maybe I start writing a blog. Well, once you write that blog, blog what, can, what can happen? Well, maybe I even write a book and you'd see out of that fear that some amazing ideas and some amazing things can pop up and then ask yourself, what am I waiting for? <laughs> like what no moments in life are guaranteed. Why would I wait to jump on this? So that's the explicit advice that I give for 2017 for your dream chasers, your amazing dream chasers. And we're going to wrap on that guys, because it's awesome. <laughs> And so if you haven't been paying attention, you can, of course, find all of this on the show notes page at ChasingDreamsHQ.com slash episode 76. And that includes the link to the Positivity Summit and registration if you'd like to attend. More information will be out as we get it. Uh, but hopefully we'll see you guys there. Any last yeah. words, Cornell? Yes. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, me and Amy will be there. We'll be giving our free ice cream. So make sure that you attend. Thank you so much for listening to Chasing Dreams. Amy would love to connect with you and hear all about your pursuit of chasing your dreams. Connect with her on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram via at Chasing Dreams HQ. Or you can find Amy on Twitter 
at AmyJ21. That's A-I-M-E-E-J-2-1. Be sure to visit headquarters over at ChasingDreamsHQ.com for more inspiration, motivation, and resources to help with your own dream chase. We hope you'll join Amy next week. And until then, keep chasing. Keep chasing.